Six Speed Dakota here and today I'm going to be doing a condensed version of my how to change your own engine oil video. I already have one on doing it on my truck but unfortunately it's three parts because uh, at the time YouTube would only let me put on a 10 minute video. So now I'm going to shoot a condensed version of that and uh, I'm going to be changing all the fluids in the in the truck today. So I'm going to put up a probably maybe five part series or so in how to change all your fluids on your vehicle. So first thing we do is we're going to start with the engine oil because the motor's warm right now. The stuff you get, the tools you're going to need, in this case you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench and possibly an oil filter wrench. You're going to need a good quality oil filter. Quality oil filter. And of course I use synthetic 5W30 engine oil. So let's get started. First step, I've already got the vehicle warmed up and I got the front end on ramps and I got the back end up on jacks just because I'm not a very big guy but and I could get underneath it relatively easily but this is a fairly low truck so I'm going to uh, need a little bit of help to get underneath it actually. So first thing I'm going to do is on the Dakotas the hood latch is actually right here on the rams it's underneath here. I'm going to lift the hood. Now some people prefer to take off their oil cap, some people don't. If you're going to take it off, leave it right here in the hood latch so that if you go to close the hood, the hood won't shut. So you don't forget that oil cap. And also I will likely clean out my air filter as well. But I've already got a video on that. So first step we're going to go underneath and we're going to drain the engine oil. Alright, so the first step we're going to do is we're going to place our suitable drain pan right underneath our oil pan right here. Now this belly bar here, the oil always hits it and makes a mess. So just make sure that you put the pan a little bit further forward because when the oil hits it, it's going to travel even further. Don't ask me how I know. Hey, one hell of a mess one day. We're going to take our wrench, our 17 millimeter wrench. Man, that thing's really on there. Oh, there we go. And bombs away. And here we go. It's going to hit the belly bar pretty soon. And of course, it's going to make a big mess. <laughs> as much as I love this truck, every time I change the oil, I think, what the hell, Dodge? Why did you do that? Okay, so now that the oil's finished draining, I've replaced the seal on the plug. It's cheap insurance. And there we go. Now, going to take our wrench and just snug it up. We don't need to kill it on there. And then I gotta clean up all of this. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna change is the filter. So I brought the drain pan underneath the filter here. And yeah, I didn't figure I was gonna get lucky enough to have that come off by hand. Use my handy oil filter pliers. Oh, 
and miss the pan. We're going to let the filter drain for a second and then we'll spin it off. Okay, so now typically what I'll do is because the filter is straight up and down or kind of at an angle, but pointing upwards still, so I'm going to put the filter in the box upside down so it stays. Now this is not a required step, this is a recommended step. I like to fill the filter up with motor oil so that it doesn't start up as dry. And then with clean hands, take some motor oil and smear it around the rubber o-ring to lubricate that rubber o-ring, prevent it from sticking. Now we have to prep the filter housing there the filter surface for the new filter. So what we'll do go back up underneath here and notice how the filter housing does not have the old o-ring stuck on it. I like to wipe this off anyway because by wiping it off you ensure that you don't put a second, second o-ring on there by accident which is called double gasketing. This is the reason why I've never double gasketed a filter because I've always cleaned that mating surface off. So if I can get the filter out with my left hand. It's kind of difficult since I'm right handed. All we do is we just screw it back in. Oops. It's a little difficult since I'm right handed but once you get the thread started it should just screw right in just like that. And then since I can only do it with one hand. This is a fairly big filter and this fil these filter te filters tend to leak if they're not tight enough. So typically I'll tighten this one on with both hands. A little Honda filter or something like that, you should only really tighten with one. Okay, now it's time to add the engine oil. Now I know that this truck takes six quarts of engine oil, but if you don't know your oil capacity or you can't find it, with the four cylinder Start with maybe two and a half to three, check the dipstick and add as necessary. With a V6, add three to three and a half. And with the V8, add at least four and check accordingly. Now keep in mind, once it's full the first time, then you have to start the engine and let the oil fill the filter up and then check it again and pop up as necessary. So just keep that in mind, you don't want to be running around a quart low on oil, because that would be bad. <coughs> so once we're done this, we'll check the engine oil, and if it's all good, we'll ready to start the engine up. Now, although it may seem obvious, some people still don't know how to check their own oil. So what you do is you take the dipstick out, you wipe the end off, put it back in, and you pull it out. And you check the level on there. Now, in this case, I am a little bit over the full mark, but that's okay. Because as soon as I start the engine, it's going to go right back down. So, make sure I open the garage. Now we're going to, uh oh, where's my keys? Now there's the oil, oil pressure light right there. So push the clutch in, oil pressure light goes off, and hold the motor at a high angle, oil 
So the pressure light doesn't come back on. So we're all good. Now it's time to go back and check the level of the oil again. Right back on the battery. Oops. Same thing. Pull. Wipe. Dip. And check. Now I know you can't see it really well, but right there's the full mark, and right there's where the level is, so we're within the limits. And that's how you change your engine oil on an 06 Dakota. It's that simple. All right, thank you for watching. Next one is going to be how to change your transmission and transfer case fluid, which I'm going to start in about five minutes now. So I'll probably upload these videos once a week until all the fluids have been changed, and we'll even include power steering fluid. Yes, the very neglected power steering fluid. All right, so I'm going to move on to transmission. You guys stay tuned. Thanks for watching.